And we're live with Robert Mahari, a member of the Board of Advisors for the MIT Computational Law Report and our emissary in Davos, Switzerland now for the big annual World Economic Forum event. And you've been representing Computational Law Report and MIT's Computational Law Program out there. So I want to thank you and just um, check in and find out how are things going in Davos. Absolutely, Daza. It's it's been a pleasure uh, to to have the opportunity to to represent uh, the computational law report here at the Imagination in Action event uh, that took place in the TCS Dome uh, at the World Economic Forum. Uh, it's been exciting to to talk to lots of different people from all sorts of backgrounds about uh, our take on computational law, and it was really encouraging to hear that. You know, from business leaders to uh, people in the governments of developing and developed countries to people who are in uh, the art dealer business and the consulting business and the professional service business, real estate, everybody seems to agree, lawyers too, by the way, that there's something really wrong and really old fashioned about the law and that change is needed. And I think that universally people appreciated uh, the way that the computational law report report approached uh, law from this interdisciplinary, human-centered, uh, almost design thinking perspective. So it's been really exciting, um, and I, I hope that we can build partnerships uh, out here and uh, bring things back to Boston and kind of continue building this vision. So this has been great. Uh, yeah. Sounds exciting. Seems really exciting. I know it's like, in a sense, like the biggest show on, on earth in, in some ways in terms of the world leaders and the thought leaders and uh, all the energy and, and the activities that happen. So you, you, as I understand it, you had a demo pod and you, um, and you, you, you basically did a talk through, is that right, of, of what the computational law report is and what computational law is and you got some feedback from what was it like people strolling by in the pavilion or, or how can you just describe like what, what happened and how did it go? Sure. So, so essentially I had uh, what amounted to a TV screen behind me uh, with a couple of slides and people would stroll by. I was placed conveniently by the buffet so I could corner people and um, I could tell them, well, first and foremost, what computational law even is and explain to them that, you know, law has always been code. Um, it's been code since uh, the Babylonian King Hammurabi chiseled his code into stone 4,000 years ago. Uh, then it was uh, paper-based code, and now we're moving to this computational world uh, at MIT. And um, that, to try and do that takes a interdisciplinary approach uh, and a design thinking approach. And so I talk people through that, and then I would talk them through how this might apply to what they do. Um, because I think one of the things that's exciting about the way the computational law works is that it's focused on application. It's focused on the real world and making positive change. And so I would talk to people about, uh, there are art dealers and I would talk to them about copyright and how we could you know, think about copyright. Um, there are people in the real estate business, so I talked to them um, about property rights. Um, a lot of people in the finance business who were very interested in the compliance and know your customer part. Um, so all sorts of things um, from all sorts of different industries. And um, it, was, it was fun with all sorts, of, and there were also lawyers in the room um, who, who were very excited about what we were trying to do um, and maybe a little bit scared, but I think in a good way, at least by the time we were done. Uh, yeah, change can be scary, uh, except when you engineer it. I, hopefully. And so it, 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 I, it, I believe you went through some slides that we, that we prepped back at MIT, and one of them was the computational law development goals. So that's something we don't even have in our site yet. We haven't shared it widely, but can you give a little preview as to what uh, some of those development goals were and, and uh, how that part of the demo went? Absolutely. So second part of your question first, which is that the best laid plans and men, um, you know the rest, right? So I, I would love, I always try to kind of get to the constitutional law development goals. And I think that by the time I got through the first five of my presentation, someone would be like, well, what about this? And what do you mean innovate in the law? That's like crazy talk. Um, so, so I didn't get to talk about them as much as I wanted to, but um, we, we come up with these, uh, first of all, we come up with a mission. The mission is to leverage technology to be able to um, 
accelerate um, prosperity, to create inclusive uh, justice systems, and to create predictable, transparent legal systems. And so the way we thought about this mission or in thinking about this mission, we came up with five computational law development goals. And those are inspired by the UN's uh, sustainable development goals, but obviously kind of focused on the law. So the first one is a focus on humans, human-centered law, um, and putting the human kind of in the middle of it. And this means that you know everybody should be able to understand the law. This means that law should work for people generally, things like that. Um, and then some of them are more technical, like uh, thinking about law as something measurable, thinking of law as data. Um, and then some of them are more about how the law operates across jurisdiction, across time. So we had this idea of universal interoperability. Um, and then we also had an interdisciplinary angle to it. Uh, so thinking about these partnerships that the law needs uh, in order to be an integrated solution and not this solo discipline. So, so those, those five computational law development goals, and I hope that we'll be able to share them more broadly soon, uh, really kind of help us frame how we might approach uh, this mission. Indeed. Great. Well, it, sounds like you're, it sounds like you're having a good time and making some good progress. Can't wait to debrief with you when you get back to MIT and uh, the United States of America. But until then, enjoy Davos. Don't forget to go to all the parties and, um, and you know, bring back that big fat you know, stack of business cards. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been really great.